Hi guys, welcome to this new video. My name is Claudia and welcome here on Claudia's Knits. Usually I make a knitting podcast type of videos, but today I want to do a project vlog kind of video. I'm working on a fingering weight sweater and I've shown you this in a previous podcast and lots of you were interested in how I'm making this because I'm modifying a pattern and I want, although I started this project a month ago, I really want to share my thoughts on it and how I'm like tackling this project. So I thought, who cares that I already started it and it isn't a project vlog from like the cast on till the end, it is from now till the end and I'll walk you through everything uh, that I did and the decisions that I've made. So yeah, welcome. Uh, if you're interested in making a fingering weight sweater, and especially if you want to modify an existing pattern to a fingering weight version, maybe you can get some tips from this. Keep in mind, I'm just winging it and I just want to share what I do. So the pattern that I'm talking about is the Monday sweater by Petite Knit. And I'm wearing the first version I made uh, just for this video to show you. Uh, but I chose to modify this pattern because one, I already made it. So it is easier to modify it a bit. Uh, but also I know I like this pattern. So what I'm wearing is my uh, Monday sweater version. It's a raglan sweater, as you can see here, uh, with a double folded collar, which is quite nice and small and then the body and it has a really big ribbing and that's one of the features of this sweater and I really enjoy wearing this sweater because it's nice for the in between months it's not warm enough for me for the like cold winter months but uh, I can wear this more months of the year than my thicker sweaters so I wanted to make another one and I bought some beautiful, really beautiful hand dyed yarn that I wanted to use for a fingering weight sweater. And I just couldn't find a pattern that I really liked for a fingering for my gauge. Uh, so yeah, that's why the Monday sweater. I like this detail of the raglan. It has short row shapings. Uh, it's by Petit Knit, so it's really clearly written. But I want to make some changes. So yeah, my thoughts is, are a little bit like all over the place, so excuse me for that, but yeah. Um, I used a fingering weight yarn for this version as well. It's a hand tied yarn by Apesca, and the pattern by Petit Knit herself um, calls for a DK weight yarn, so a fingering with a mohair, Be but because I don't like mohair, I just made this with fingering weight yarn and I made this exactly a year ago and I was also winging it with this version to be honest because I uh, my gauge was different and I sized up to an extra large and that's what I came up with and the good thing with raglan sweaters is you can go as long as you want with the raglan increases and make the yoke as big as you want it so you can modify that easily um, but this sweater grew a lot with blocking. It's super wash yarn, so that happens. And I really like how this looks on me. I like wearing it. It has a beautiful drape. But now I want to be a little bit more mindful about what I'm doing in this process. I'm a year further. I'm knitting a year longer. I feel like I'm more experienced and I can do that now. Uh, I don't know if I want to keep the big ribbing. I did a twisted rib by the way, but that's for a later state. Um, so the yarn that I'm using is from my friend, the Mindful Creators, her brand, and it's flowy fingering yarn in the color Field of Flowers. So it's a beautiful neutral base with lots of pink speckles and also some green and blue speckles. So I bought three skeins of this and that will be plenty for this sweater. Um, I'm really curious how much I will actually use because I don't want it to be 
as oversized as this version. And I'll show you where I'm at right now and then I'll start talking about the whole process from start to where I'm at. So this is what I have so far. It's quite far. I'm like almost done with the yoke, to be honest. Look at that fabric. It's beautiful. Like it's like a creamy strawbet, strawberry sorbety ice cream color. I really enjoy this and I will try this on a little bit later. So this is what I have. Um, so yeah, let's start from the beginning. How did I choose what to do? Um, I won't share exact numbers, by the way, because everyone's size is different. And I'm kind of making this made to my, to my specific measurements because I'm modifying it anyway uh, and I don't want to get in trouble and share too much of the pattern itself you should buy it and use the tips from this video maybe to modify your own version uh, anyways let's talk about gauge that's the first thing to start and with this yarn I really wanted to start with the fabric and uh, use a needle size and think uh, and um, I wanted to start from the fabric so I made a swatch with needle size 3 millimeters I think also with different 3.25 and the fabric that I liked the best that's what I wanted to use so I looked at the gauge of that and that was a gauge of 28 by 36 stitches so really uh, fingering weight gauge um, I do have to say I knit that a little bit tighter than normally to get that gauge, to get that beautiful fabric and I'm still on the gauge with that. So it's nice and a little bit tighter because one of the things that I don't really like about this sweater is that the gauge is a little bit more open. I knitted this on needle size three and a half um, and I don't know if I can show you but yeah you can see it's more see-through well it's hard to see right now but it is more open it is more see-through uh, it is more delicate has more drape there are positives there are negatives um, but now I don't want my gauge to fit within the pattern and manipulate my gauge I want to manipulate the pattern um, the Pattern from the Monday sweater calls for, I looked it up, um, 21 by 28 stitches for a 10 by 10 centimeters. So instead of 21, I have a 28 stitches in uh, widthwise. So uh, I first decided how much positive ease do I want? And I want to end up with about 10 centimeters of positive ease. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But because it's hand tied yarn, it supports yarn, so it will probably grow. So I want to hint more on the lesser positive ease this time. Uh, if you know me, if you've seen videos of me before, you know I like my sweaters to be oversized. So it doesn't matter if it's turning out more oversized than that. Uh, but that's my starting point. And the Monday sweater, just side note, calls for 15 to 20 centimeters of positive ease. I think this is more, but this is how the sweater is supposed to look. Anyways, 10 centimeters of positive ease for my body. That means I have, uh, I need a chest circumference of about 110 centimeters. And normally with a chest circumference of 100 centimeters, I fall exactly between a large or an extra large with petite knit. I usually choose large. Uh, but she calls for so much positive ease that for this sweater, maybe I could have with a normal gauge, I could have gone down for a medium or even smaller. Um, then I calculated how much, how many stitches I needed for the chest circumference to have that 10 centimeters of positive ease. So 110 centimeters, multiply that 
by the, my gauge, the 28, and then you have 308 stitches. So I need to aim for about 308 stitches below the uh, splitting of um, putting the sleeves uh, to rest. Splitting for sleeves? Yes. Eh? Uh, so I want about 300 stitches below this part because at the yoke, because it's a bracket, you will have the sleeve stitches and there will be way more stitches, but that's my aim. And then I looked at all the sizings because the Monday sweater has, uh, I think it comes from an extra small to a 5XL. And the size that matched that the most is a 3XL. So that's a little bit my aim. I want to work towards the 3XL size and um, keep that as a guidance, but I'm not following everything from that size. So that's how you can calculate which, how many sizes you need to go up. So look what circumference do you want to have, how many centimeters, and multiply that by your specific gauge and look what size matches up uh, the most. But also keep in mind my row gauge is different. I have a row gauge of 36 right now instead of 28. So that's eight stitches off. That is a lot. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind as well. And yes. Okay. So I have my gauge. I know I want to work up towards that 300 stitches mark. And I'm using size needle. Needle size 3 millimeters. Well, then the difficulty is you start with the neckline. So you start with a different needle size. Because I want this ribbing to be nice and neat and a little bit smaller and tighter. Um, I did that on needle size two and a half, by the way. And also because then my row gauge will be even smaller than the pattern. I just looked, I've tried it on a couple of times. Like how, when did I like the length to fold it over? And I did the instructions for the folding over part everything else i just have a different count row count or did more rows uh, it is quite tight and i will try this on in a little bit uh, i have an elastic in here by the way so it looks nice and snug but it has stretched out elastic so for the cast on i looked at the pattern of the monday and all the sizes and with the cast on, like the neckline, there isn't a huge difference in all the sizes. Like all the, what is it, nine sizes? I'm guessing. Uh, there is a difference in stitch counts, but it's not like a crazy amount that you will have on the body, for example. Or on the sleeves in the end. Well, the sleeves are kind of the same. Um, and I also looked at... The Tolstati fingering weight version by Crea Bea because I already own that pattern as well. Um, and that has a really bigger, um, like a lot more stitches to cast on for the neckline. But I don't really like with that pattern that it has a really open and wide neckline. It's a t-shirt, so uh, it suits that kind of clothing more, that kind of garment. So anyways, I looked at the larger size, the 5XL, how many stitches to cast on, and I did, I believe, eight more than that. And I knew it would be maybe snug, uh, but I wanted to start with that. And I thought, in the end, if I need to frog this, I don't care. I want to enjoy this creative process, and I really do, to be honest. So I started with eight more than the largest size. Did the neckline, tried it on, and it's really stretchy. So I can pull this on uh, over my head, and I know it will uh, like stretch more with wear, but also when the garment is more finished, you have the weight of the yarn weighing it down a little bit. So it will grow a little bit. But also, I like my necklines to be really snug, and uh, it makes it a little bit more warm and more comfortable it's just my preference so maybe yours is different and you need to cast on more stitches so it's a wider neckline um, so that's where i started 
I did the neckline. That's that's easy. That's not that much different. But then you need to divide the raglan um, sections because with a raglan sweater after the neckline, you divide your work basically in four sections. So if I can show you, you have the back portion, the sleeve, the front, and another sleeve. Um, and I really want to use the Monday sweater as a guideline for that. And because I did eight stitches more than the larger side, I did two stitches more for each section. So my um, oh, for holding. I don't know the word in English at the top of my head, uh, but at least like the design feature of how many stitches there are compared to each section is the same because I did the same amount extra on each section. And then you do the short rows and I did the short rows exactly as pattern, uh, but the short rows have a function to shape the neckline, but also to make the neck higher up in the back so it sits more comfortably otherwise you get this weird shaping um, so that's the function of the short rows and because my row gauge is so much smaller um, i did an extra short row back and forth Dus i measured or i calculated with uh, the amount of short rows that i needed to do and how many rows i would have knit and with the gauge of the pattern the 28 row gauge that should have been around five centimeters so i did an extra short row to come a little bit closer to that five centimeters still don't have that but i felt like if i did another short rows it would have come up way too close to here to each other so that's what i did then i put in a marker so that's my back that's the end of my short row section uh, so yeah, then I could start with the increases and with most raglan sweaters you increase with all the raglan points every other round I still did that because I need a lot with also with length um, so yeah you can see I put markers in for every 10 rows that I did I have some progress trackers because sometimes, and you can recognize that maybe if you've done a raglan sweater, but if the yoke gets big and you have so many stitches on your needles, you need some extra motivation. And progress trackers really help for me. Uh, what did I want to say? So I looked up for the 3XL for now and how many rows of increases I needed to do with the increases on the body and on the sleeve, so eight increases every time. Uh, I looked that up and that was my aim. And I tried it on and that was maybe two days ago. So it's been a month. I started this a month ago, but I'm also working on other projects. So in a month I was about here. So I did most of the yoke. And then I tried it on, but I need some length. And I'm really deciding at this point how many uh, stitches I want on the sleeves, how many on the body. And I need to try this on like so many times more. Um, and also don't want to forget that you can see I have two strands of yarn here. It's uh, hand tied yarn. So I'm um, alternating the skeins to prevent pooling. So I'm going to get this on a bigger like cord and I can try this on for you. Uh, so be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I'm having it on. Oh, look at this. So this is how the neckline fits. It's a little bit higher up than my other version, but I think this will stretch out as I said. And it is a really a springtime sweater to be honest. It does kind of wash me out, but fortunately I have dark hair and I just like this yarn, this color. So I'm going with this anyway. And you can see the nice detail of the raglan. And this is the back. I have to pull on the needles a little bit to tighten it. 
so you can see more where I'm at. So I'm past the shoulder. I've worked on this uh, yesterday for a bit more uh, since I tried it on. So for me as well, this is a little bit of a surprise. And as you can see, I'm kind of, well, almost ready for splitting for sleeves. So I really like how this looks and it feels so like made to measure. It's, it fits, I think, perfectly. Um, more oversized than I usually go for. So that's a little bit, I'm a little bit nervous about that, especially for the arms. It feels like it's, I don't know if it's a little bit too tight fitting for the arms for my taste. So hopefully that will get better, but also this is really hard to try on. So now I have both my raglan increases points, you know, the markers uh, in my hands with a little bit in between because I need to pick up stitches beyond under the arm. And this is how it will fit. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's not really my taste to have it this tight fitting. So I want to have it a little bit larger. Um, so I'm already at the point at, um, well, for all the sizes in the Monday sweater, at some point you have done the increases for a certain amount of rows on the body and on the sleeves. And then you stop working the increases on the sleeves and only work increases on the body. And it's for all the sizes, but um, just different how much further you need to go. And maybe you can see it a little bit. But I'm already started that. So the increases go only on the body and not on the sleeves. And I really deliberated for are my sleeves big enough? And I looked up um, how many stitches I have on the sleeves. And what's that compared to all the sizes? It is bigger than the 3XL or maybe even the 5XL, the biggest size. But also my gauge is so much smaller. So that needs to be bigger. I feel like, but also the 3XL was my aiming point for if I have that amount of stitches, it should be fine. But I think the yoke should be a little bit lower. And then my arm is also a little bit like smaller in circumference, a little bit lower. So it will be fine. And now I'm just working on the increases on the body. So that will grow a bit because I do want some positive ease. I don't want it too tight and also I really hate and I've talked about this a lot of times I don't want it to have it tight under my armpit like with sweat and everything I really don't like that so it needs to come down uh, lower but not as low as the other one and it will probably grow in length so I want to keep that in mind and right now I'm just playing with the idea of how far do I want this to go? Because as you can see, it is really nice right now. Hmm, this is hard. Uh, but I also need to cast some stitches under the armpit. And if I look uh, at my regular size, the size large, how many do I need to cast on? And how many do I need to cast on for the 3XL? That's quite a big difference. But also, you don't have to do exactly that. Especially when <laughs> modifying it. So somewhere in between. But also picking up extra stitches under the arm uh, will help make the sleeve a little bit bigger, will help the positive ease and the chest circumference. But it will also sag down more if you cast on too many stitches. So that's a decision that I find quite hard. Here is the point again. But also here. So if I want to join them, they can almost touch each other so i don't know i think i want to keep going like at least a centimeter more so that's probably for me four rows and the increases that come with that and maybe with four rows more i need to try it again and see how it looks because one centimeter on this size side also means a centimeter on the back extra. 
and then it will probably, well, then it can touch each other. But also, this is really tight under my armpit, so I want a little bit more length. So maybe a centimeter and a half. I'm also really, like, I don't want it to be too big. I think that that is what happened with this one. And as I said, I, this is one of my most successful knits and I love wearing this and I wear this all the time when the weather is more appropriate for it. But the yoke depth is crazy. And you can see here as well where it stopped increasing on the sleeves. And then here are the stitches picked up for under the body. So that's probably about here. Maybe I also worked an extra row, I don't know. But that's also around here. You can also see, by the way, with this lettering, that I didn't pick up the stitches under the arm uh, when working the arm correctly. I've learned a lot this past year, I don't mind. Uh, so yeah, the yoke depth is crazy. Like I was wearing it here and it ended up here. Look at that difference. So I don't want to do that, but I don't want to rip it out and adding length, <laughs> you know. So that's where I'm at. I think I'm going to stop uh, blabbering about this for now. I will keep you updated for now and um, well, film once in a while when I'm trying it on or when I'm making decisions and keep you posted and yeah, take you along with me. I've talked so much about this already it's crazy i'm surprised but anyways i've got a lot to tell and hopefully you can get some tips from this and make a beautiful sweater yourself that fits like your body so goodbye for now and i'll see you next time okay so hi welcome back for another update uh, i've just worked on this for a bit and i knitted about this much since my last progress tracker so right now i really want to try this on and see where that hits where the yoke hits and if i want to split for sleeves at the moment so let's try it on together and the back i'm really sorry about the lighting but i really want to keep this real uh, and it's evening as you can see okay so, well, my needle is in the way. So the lighting is really bad, but this is the front. These are the, the raglan increase lines. And this is where we're at. So it is only maybe a centimeter and a half longer than in the previous try-on. And I feel like I have a little bit more ease, but I need to get it over like the biggest part of my chest, of course. Let's see, this is the raglan increase bit and this too. Well, it can hit. It can touch each other and uh, you know I need to cast on some stitches here but i feel like this is maybe a little bit too tight under the arm because maybe it will be like this much in between i mean i love how it looks but i don't know how much me it is i feel like this would be okay for the sleeve maybe i just want to do a little bit more just to be sure Mm, it's hard. But I think I'm going to keep knitting for just a little bit more. Okay, I'm back again already. Uh, it's about an hour later and I've done four rows. So that's how long it takes me. Um, and yeah, I think I'm here. The trusted test with the sleeves. If I can find them over here and here. Yes, now this feels long enough. Like it can easily touch. It's getting lower under my armpit. 
and I don't think I want to pick up a whole lot of stitches under the arms because I don't want this to be too saggy maybe this will be long enough as it is since it's growing so maybe for tonight I should just keep it like this try it on again tomorrow think on it a bit if it isn't maybe even too much because I this feels like a whole like a big difference it's four rows so yeah that's my update for now I think I'm going to try it on again tomorrow and just think on it a little bit well it, it will hit about here so not longer definitely not longer and maybe just a couple of stitches to pick up under the arms I don't know like I know that 3XL uh, asks for I don't know between the a whole lot of stitches maybe between the 15 and 20 even I'm not sure I haven't looked it up and I know the medium large my regular size has way less but I don't want to do what the pattern says I just I feel like if I do it at this length maybe just a couple maybe maybe I will do five that feels like a right number for me right now but I'm happy anyways and I'm also glad that I'm probably done with the yoke because that's the most exciting part then it feels like a sweater later on if you've done a little bit of the body and the hard work like the labor intensive almost 15 minutes for one round well it was probably 10 minutes per round then it will be done so that's it for now and yeah i'll keep you updated so i'm back again it's the next day and i really want to knit again on this uh, but first i wanted to try this on like i said last night um, i mean it looks great i love how this is coming together i love it with my dark hair I feel like it's maybe a little bit too big, the yoke. But also, I don't really feel like taking back, like knitting back one row or maybe two. Because uh, before this, I had four rows less. So, uh, yeah, I think it's too much effort for just knitting back one row. I'm not going to do that. And I think because this hits right here and it can touch the other side i think i'm going to keep it at the five stitches that it said i looked up the stitch counts for like the number of stitches you have to pick up in the pattern um i'm completely off but i'm just doing what it feels right so i'll keep you updated how it looks but i need to knit like a couple of centimeters on the body worst case scenario i'll rip that back but hey i feel like this is going quite quick so yeah that's my update for now again. So I have split for sleeves as you can see and I've done maybe four rounds. I think it is not enough to really get a few good look of how it will fit but I really wanted to try it on because I forgot my calculations that I really wanted to aim that 300 stitches mark uh, for the body to get about 10 centimeters of positive ease well i calculated it before i split for sleeves and i'm not going to make that 300 stitches uh, then i would have needed to pick up maybe like 20 stitches on each side or uh, increase more down the yoke and i didn't want to do that either so i cast it on 10 stitches on both sides and i think well, to be honest, I probably will have maybe zero ease. But I'm hoping because it is super wash that it will grow a little bit and maybe come to a couple of centimeters of positive ease still. I'm going to work a little bit further. I mean, look at how beautiful this looks. It looks like a tailored sweater probably. So yeah, I'm still happy. I'm still working on it. And 
this is how it looks so far. I haven't done anything like a sweater this fitting to my body like ever. I've only done oversized. So I'm a little bit nervous, but also really curious. Yeah. Hi guys, just a little fit check. Don't mind the noise. I'm multitasking and cooking at the same time. So yeah, um, but this is where we're at. So I'm just trying it on to see how long I want this sweater to be. And as you can see, it almost hits the edge of my high-waisted jeans, which I usually wear. So yeah, I feel like I need to knit up about here and then I can do the ribbing because yeah, if you look at the fit, I think I do have a couple of centimeters of positive ease. But not as much as I first planned. I do like it though. It's beautiful. Um, but with this, I think I'm going to tuck this in in my jeans. So I don't want to have like a whole lot of fabric to tuck in. But enough so it's secure. And when I lift my arms, I want it like I need this space to be still in my jeans. So I think about four centimeters maybe. Four or five maybe two inches so yeah this is where i'm at <laughs> I haven't filmed an update for this sweater in such a long time. Uh, for you, it's just in one clip and one video. But uh, for me, it's been a while and it's long overdue, as you can see. I've made uh, quite a lot of progress and I've almost done with this sweater. Uh, so I really need to talk to you about everything that I did since last time. Well, this is just for my memory sakes, but in the last clip, you saw that I uh, joined under the arms, uh, the split for sleeves, and then I was about here, I think. Well, then uh, the most, well, the, the, the least interesting part for uh, modifying a sweater started, that is the body, because that's just plain stocking it in round, and you can do it however long you want to. I have a really short torso, so I make my sweaters uh, always shorter than pattern and quite cropped. And I'm working with hand tied yarn and have only 300 gram skeins. So I didn't want to have it too long anyways. But also this is super wash yarn. So I know it will grow when I'm blocking this. So hopefully I can see. So right now it's tucked in. The body is done. And this is the length that I got. So this is quite large for my kind of sweaters. Because usually my uh, armpit is lower, so I have like a really short portion. And then the ribbing, I just did a one by one rib, just a regular rib uh, on needle size two and a half. So the body is full on three millimeter needles and the ribbing is on two and a half. So I'm really glad with that. But as you can see, well, it puffs a little bit below here. And blocking will help with that because then it, the ribbing will relax. But also, I don't have a lot of positive ease. And that's something that, like in the first clip of this video, I said I wanted about 8 to 10 centimeters of positive ease. And I feel like I have less. Maybe I have 5 centimeters of positive ease. Um, so it is quite more form-fitting than I would normally go for. I mean, it looks wonderful, it looks stunning, but I really want to have this blocked and hopefully it will stretch also a little bit width-wise just for more comfort level. I really love the fabric, like the yarn, of course, and the colors, but 
um, how the fabric feels is really nice. So again, can't wait for blocking. And then I started the sleeve. So I just uh, put the stitches that were left on hold on a needle, uh, 40 centimeters circular needle, three millimeters. I know some people go up half a needle size because usually you knit a little bit tighter in a smaller circumference, but I don't really have that problem. At least for this sweater I haven't. And then I picked up the stitches I cast it on under the arm, which is 10 stitches I did, I believe. And some extra stitches to hopefully prevent some holes here. But as you can see, I'm not an expert at that, so hopefully it will be fine. I decreased the extra stitches. Um, and then after maybe two rounds, I started helical knitting again. And funnily enough, there's like a really pink line. But I couldn't have prevented that with helical knitting because that's just on the same row. And then I struggled a little bit with finding the right decrease rate for the arms. Um, normally when I follow a petite knit pattern or like any other design, but this is the like the Monday pattern, it says to decrease every, well, let's say every 10th row and do that for 10 times, 12 times. It depends on the gauge you're working with. Um, but because I'm short person, I'm making usually a size large, but my body is like shorter. I just need it for the width wise. Um, I need to shorten the sleeves as well. So when it, the pattern says every 10th row, I usually decrease every 9th row. So I can do a little bit for the same amount of decreases I need, but in a shorter sleeve. But now I needed to figure it out. So firstly, um, the sleeve, as you can see on the other sleeve, isn't all that big to start with. Um, but I really like that slim look for this sweater. Normally I have like huge sleeves and it's tapering in a little bit, but I didn't want to have this like really like too snug or too snug around the elbow where it will stretch. So I started with every sixth, sixth row. Um, because it's fingering like two stitches, you don't get the effect all that much. And then I did that for, I think seven times, eight times. And then I did every 10th row and then I tried it on again and decided to stop decreasing altogether. So around under the elbow, I start, I stopped decreasing altogether and just worked through the length that I wanted. Um, I was down deliberating, frogging the whole sleeve back and just do one increase, decrease rate, I'm sorry. Uh, but that wasn't, I didn't feel like that would be fun to frog something that's just for me and looks good. Um, if I would write a pattern, uh, I want one rate and don't, not, don't need to change it up. Well, my English is bad today, sorry. Um, so I will make a note for next time, maybe Every 10th row, 9th row would be a good one for me. That's for next, the next time. Um, and as you can see, I did the ribbing again on 2.5 millimeters, one by one rib, the same length as the body. I like that. It is shorter than a Monday sweater, but I did it well because that has like a really big rib. But I wanted like nice in between, not too dainty, not too. Um, Massive, too big. Uh, for now, I feel like it's a little bit too short. But again, it is uh, super wash yarn. So I'm expecting this to grow. Probably with blocking, it will end up here. And then it will shrink up, hopefully around here. Like I want it to have a little bit on my arm. So hopefully it will block to here. Um, but I really needed to do this because I'm afraid I'm going to have to play yarn chicken. It, it will depend. I don't have a whole lot left. But as you can see, the sleeve is nice and a little bit tapered. And it has some puffiness here. I didn't want a balloon sleeve. But I also don't want this, huh, like the, the effect too dramatic. But also don't want a really wide sleeve. So hopefully with blocking this will also probably loosen up a little bit. And then it will be straighter. Which I like. 
and now I'm on to the last sleeve and yeah hopefully it is Tuesday today I'm hoping to have this finished this weekend um, and for dates like it's March the 26th I believe so I'm working on the sweater for two months now I'm wanting this to be done I really love working on this uh, I really love working on figuring weight projects I think they're fun I like small needles and I think it looks beautiful uh, but I really want to have this done so I can wear it because it's almost that time here in the Netherlands uh, that I'm able to wear this like some days it's warm enough and other days it's I want a thicker sweater still so yeah that's where I'm at so I think I'm going to finish this and I'm not going to force myself to film any more bits just in the end when it's blocked or maybe like do a shot before blocking and after blocking for comparison that would be nice um, but I have been knitting on this and I was thinking to myself like I need to film a little bit especially for the arms like the process but I couldn't bring myself to it and um, I'm here for myself and doing things that I like and I like filming today so that's it for now next time we'll have a sweater Actually, I have different jeans on, so the length issue comparing is a little bit hard, but here it is. It feels like um, it has grown a little bit, as I expected it to be. Um, and I do think I have that about 8 to 10 centimeters of positive ease that I wanted at the beginning. And I managed to do that with blocking. So. It's kind of perfect don't have anything to say about that so it's a little bit longer still not all that long but long enough for me to tuck it in my jeans that's the way I like to wear it it's kind of loose fitting I love how soft it feels and the sleeve length is perfect so yeah this is the after shot so let's sit down for a bit and talk a little bit more because this is the final bit the final part of this whole project vlog i really hope you enjoyed watching it and got some tips or some inspiration from it because uh, it was really fun to do this project it took me about three months i believe so it was a perfect slow knit project for me and I would totally do it again with some tweaks here and there. Um, next time, as I mentioned in the a previous clip, uh, I would do the decreases on the sleeves a little bit more steady, just one rate. Maybe uh, cast on a few extra stitches so it is a little bit lower because this is quite warm. But it's sunny today, it's an actually a warm spring day, so I'm hot right now. Um, but yeah, um, but actually on some other days when I wore it, uh, it was too cold. It was too thin for me personally on my work to wear. Um, and I don't know what I can say about it more, apart from I love the yarn. Let's mention it again, it is hand dyed yarn from Fem from the Mindful Creators. It's a flowy fingering base on a field of flowers and she dyed it perfectly. I did helical knitting all through the sweater except for about here. Then I ran out of my second skein and I had one skein left. And I think 
if you look really closely, it is a little bit more sparse over here, but just a tiny bit. So I was too lazy to uh, undo the whole yarn ball and work from two different ends of the same yarn ball. Uh, and I was just hoping that I would manage it. And I think it looks fine. And I have, how many grams do I have left? I believe I have 18 grams left of my third skein. So I made it, could have gone like a centimeter longer on the body or a little bit on the sleeves. Um, the sleeves shrunk up a bit with blo after blocking with wearing, but now I really like it for the spring weather because this really feels like a spring sweater so yeah that's it and with that i'm going to end this project vlog and let me know if you want me to do some again in the future uh, and also let me know if you're planning to do this yourself i would love to get some other inspiration other uh, plan plans or pattern modifications that you have made or planning to make uh, so let's talk about that Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.